Deuteronomy 32 says, The God Most High gave to Yahweh as an inheritance the tribe of Jacob who became Israel. Moses introduced him as the God of their fathers and Yahweh was accepted by the Israelites as their national God. Moses was also given a plan from Yahweh to invade Canaan and take the land. Moses was well aware it would be by violence and the sword. The Shah Su, wandering nomads in the southern Levant, had used Yahweh in the same way before the Israelites were assigned to him. Moses learned of Yahweh from the Shah Su. The Shasi tribes included the Midianites. We also learn from Egyptian records, that the Shasu meaning God's dwelling place is attributed to several sites scattered throughout the wilderness of South Canaan. Biblical evidence of this can be found in the book of Exodus, where a key role is played by Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, who lives near the mountain of God. It is Jethro who indirectly leads Moses to his first meeting with Yahweh at the burning bush, and it is he who inaugurates the tent of meeting with a sacrifice and proclaims that Yahweh is greater than all the other gods for having freed the Hebrew slaves from Egypt. Jethro expresses to his proud joy, that the God he and his people already worshipped, Yahweh, has proved himself mightier than all other gods. Thus, rather than Jethro's conversion to Yahwism, the passage actually shows the first incorporation of the Israelite leaders into the worship of Yahweh. El was the head god of the Canaanite pantheon, just like Zeus was, in the ancient Greek pantheon. El was father and high god to all the national gods. There is evidence that El and Yahweh were worshipped in Canaan at the same time. Just like El and Baal. Yahweh's status increased as the Israelites became more powerful in the Levant area. Eventually, for the Israelites at least, Yahweh absorbed some of the qualities of El and the Jews alleged their God was the only one. This process is called syncretism and has been observed by anthropologists and historians with other religions as well. YHWH does actually mean, I will be what I will be. When the Jews were dispersed from the Levant by the Romans, non-Jews continued to live there as they had before the Jews arrived. They continued to worship El, Asherah, and Baal. I believe Jesus Christ's purpose was to reform the Jewish religion and reorient it from Yahweh the war god to El the god of creation, compassion, kindness and love. The father Jesus spoke of was loving and benevolent quite unlike Yahweh. Yahweh is a God of war. And that is what Jesus knew. And that is why the Jews crucified him, 